presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. Last night, Josh Tomlin dominated the Seattle Mariners with a one-hit complete game shutout, leading the Tribe to a 5-0 win. Now, in order to take the series, the Tribe will have to unseat King Felix Hernandez, one of the best pitchers in the American League. So get out of the way. It's the Indians and the Mariners next on Sports Time Ohio. Under cloudy skies in downtown Seattle, Washington, it's Cleveland Indians baseball. Today, the Indians and the Mariners will wrap up their three-game weekend series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Indians were able to bounce back and even the series at a game apiece thanks to a pitching performance by Josh Tomlin last night that was one for the ages. And, Rick, after the game, Josh wondered what all the fuss was about. Well, he shouldn't because I'll tell you what, it reminded me a lot of Glenn Barker's perfect game. He had nine strikeouts from the fourth inning on. He only had two in the first two innings. He was brilliant last night. One tough play was made out in right field by Ryan Rayburn to take a hit, and there was a legitimate base hit. Other than that, he was spectacular. He made it look very easy. A complete game shutout. Eight in the major since 1914. First Indians pitcher with 11 strikeouts, you know, only and just facing one over the minimum. He was that good. He was fun to watch. And so it should be a big deal, but not for Josh. Yeah, he's very humble. And obviously he needed a, a good performance. The Indians needed a good performance and they got a much needed win. Now the task gets a little bit tougher today. T.J. House is back in the big leagues with the tribe. The left hander's on the hill, but he's got King Felix standing in his way. We'll break down the pitching matchup when we come back. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Paninis. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. 
and by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Back here at Safeco Field on a Sunday afternoon, Indians and the Mariners putting the wraps on their weekend series. And T.J. House will get the call for the Tribe. And it's an interesting uh, choice for the Indians because, Rick, we've seen in the first two games of this series, the Mariners go with eight left-handed bats in their starting lineup. That won't be the case today, though, because T.J. is on the hill. Well, give him a little different look, and, and rightfully so. But he's going to have his work cut out for him because he's going to be matched up against King Felix, who's one of the best in all of baseball. This guy has assortment of pitches, a good fastball, good breaking ball, a great circle changeup, and he will throw anything at any time. Usually when the Indians have had success against him, you've got to try and get him early. So you can't fall behind this guy early in a ball game if he can shut you down. He's 6-5 and five in his career against the Indians. 3-0 in this ballpark. So, T.J. House, go out there, do exactly what Josh Tomlin did, and you'll have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Felix Hernandez, how good has he been lately? How about in his last eight starts, his ERA is 1.48. The Indians have their work cut out for them. We'll see if they can battle to a series win today here against the Mariners. The roof is open here at Safeco Field. Should be a beautiful afternoon for baseball from the Emerald City live. It's the Indians and the Mariners coming up next. Seattle. The Mariners are taking the field. A young man down on the field by the name of Roger Patterson. He's six years old. His dad's been gone for eight and a half months serving in the Navy. He's been stationed in Afghanistan, so he hasn't seen his dad in almost a year. He doesn't know that his dad is in attendance here today, and he's going to come out and surprise him. Roger is the son of a Navy reservist who is currently serving a seven-month tour in Afghanistan. And Roger, we're proud to have you and your family at Safeco Field. So let's get going, Roger, with the two words that start each game at Safeco Field. Let's hear it, Roger. Uh, we're having some sort of a problem with the microphone. Hang on. Can we get somebody to can we get somebody to help Roger with that microphone? Let's see if anybody's here to help Roger. Let's see, maybe this guy can help you. <laughs> Welcome home, Roger's dad, Petty Officer, First Class Rob Patterson. Along with the wife and Roger. Well, I'm done. I'm going to need an inning to recover. Now. Why don't we make it a family affair? Let's hear it. Play ball! 
Thank you. Roger. Well, what a surprise, huh? A special moment before today's ball game, the series finale between the Indians and the Mariners. And what a homecoming. Indian starting lineup today is brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne, Jason Kipnis, Michael Brantley. Then it's Santana, Chisenhall, and Murphy. Nick Swisher, George Kateris getting the start behind the plate. He'll hit eight. And Mike Avilas is batting ninth. We are ready to go now as Felix Hernandez into the windup. A 9-2 record with a 2.24 earn run average. 65 degrees, our game time temperature. And Bourne lifts it in the air to left field. Routine for Cole Gillespie. One away. Our GFC starting pitcher of the game, Felix Hernandez, and uh, one of the best. He has logged 120 in the third innings, only 95 hits, 128 strikeouts. He has been on some kind of roll as far as his last eight starts, at least seven innings and less than two runs. The key at defense behind him, Gillespie in left, Saunders in center, Romero in right, Seeger at third, Bloomquist at short, Cano is at second, Morrison at first, Zanino doing the catching. Jason Kipnis takes a strike. Brian Onora calling the balls and strikes. He's your crew chief. Kipnis two for six in the series. A couple of doubles. He's also walked twice. And a little half swing, but he went too far, says Marvin Hudson down to third. And then now Hernandez ahead 0-2. Strikeout for Hernandez, two down in the first. Looked like he just went fastball away and dotted that outside corner right on it. Perfect pitch. And strikeout number one. That's 129 on the year for Hernandez. bit low. Michael Brantley. He's one for seven in the series with a couple of runs driven in. You to count one and one now. On the Indians number three hitter. Brantley's had good success. Against uh, Hernandez. Now <laughs> in the dirt, two and one. Dip low. Three balls and a strike. He doesn't walk many. Coming into today, 19 walks against 128 strikeouts in this 120 innings. Yeah, it is an incredible ratio. I mean, he can throw it anywhere he wants to at any time, but he will walk Michael Brantley. The patience pays off. Keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Any good starting pitcher, the best chance to get him usually is early, and that usually <laughs> means the first inning. That's easy for us to say. Get him early. <laughs> for TJ House, it will be about command. And that's the one one way you can beat Seattle when Hernandez is pitching is to hold their lineup down. In fact, <laughs> Hernandez had a three-start stretch 
against Tampa Bay, Texas, and San Diego. He went seven innings, eight and a third, and seven innings in those three games. And when he left, the score was nothing, 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 and one to one. Yeah. So it's almost like you have to match zeros with yeah. him. Yeah. Runner goes. Santana grounds it up the middle, but oh, it caught a break. Kind of a bad break there for the Indians. Santana grounds out. And now the Mariners will come to bat against T.J. House when we come back. Bottom of the first inning, the Seattle Mariners starting lineup brought to you by Toyota for Lloyd McClendon's group today. Willie Bloomquist gets his first start in the series and he'll lead it off. Then you got three left handed hitters Saunders, Cano, and Seeger. Mike Zanino, the catcher, hits fifth, and Logan Morrison sixth, and the right handed bats Stephen Romero, John Buck, and Cole Gillespie. In with a strike. This is the first time that House has ever pitched against the Seattle Mariners. This was the start that Justin Masterson was supposed to make, and he was pushed back until Tuesday. So with House getting the start, hang it on. Optioned out. One thing we've seen with TJ House when he's working from the windup, he works in a hurry. It's inside two and two. Yeah, get the sign. Let's go. He gets into a nice rhythm. Look to right field. It will drop for a hit. So Willie Bloomquist starts the game for Seattle with a leadoff single. GMC starting pitcher is TJ House. House will be making his uh, sixth uh, start. And he is 0 1 looking for his first win. As I mentioned, first time he's pitched against Seattle. He's 0 1 on the road. And the defense behind him looks like this Brantley, Bourne, and Murphy in the outfield. Chisholm Hall, Avila, Kittness, and Swisher on the infield with Gutierrez doing the catching. Michael Saunders moved up to the number two hole today. TJ House with a strike to even the count of one and one. Down the 
left side. Mariners looking for some offense. They have had a tough time generating consistent offense this year. And a swing and a miss. He strikes it up. One away. Great pitch. Tied him up. Didn't let him extend the hands. Great clip of the game from last night. Josh Tomlin. Helping the Indians author their fifth shutout win of the season. And that one was historic in nature the way Josh went about it. Just one over the minimum. One hit allowed. 11 punch outs. Yeah, it was an absolute clinic. Watching him work last night, he was like a surgeon. Dissecting the strike zone. Right back to the house. He'll go to second base. There's one. Avila's on the first, but the throw was a little bit wide of the Mark Swisher. Trying to stretch for it, couldn't reel it in. And the inning stays alive. I don't know if, that, if Bloomquist got down there in time to do anything to Avila's, but it's a double play ball all the way with Cano running. There it is. You take a look, and the throw was a little wide, but certainly a play that uh, should have been turned. Avila's got out of the way. Swisher just didn't catch the ball. You know what? You're right. He just didn't catch the ball. Look at there's the slide, but Avila's got it off, so that's no problem. The throw was there, and Swisher didn't catch it. There's the stretch, and it went off his glove, so it should have been a double play. Kyle Seeger steps in four for seven in the series with a double. Upstairs for ball one. Pitch. Behind the right field, a base hit. Cano will stop at second base. But the inning now continues for Seattle. Seeger didn't hit it hard, but the way he swings it against the Indians, it doesn't seem to matter. Well, it looked like he went out and pulled the ball off the end of the bat. It might have been elevated a little bit. But the, the thing is, he should be out of the inning, so now he is house is having to throw extra pitches to try and get now the fourth out in the inning. Mike Zanino will be the batter. And he takes a strike. Upstairs, you know, since today is the the halfway mark, we're at game 81. I think it's it's fair to point out that Seattle, if the season were to end today, if, if we had a two half type season, they'd be a wild card team. So there's a lot of talk here in Seattle that the Mariners need to make a, a, a move of some sort here, approaching the trading deadline. Uh, offense, hey, they're second to last in batting average. They're uh, 11th in runs scored. Folks around here feel like they they have they need to go to get some offense. Find a way to, to get another middle of the order back to help Robinson Cano. Well, then they'd have to give up some of their pitching if that's the case. 
because it seems like they have plenty of it. Now House having to work. 3 1 pitch. Found right back. Now, granted, a lot can change between now and the end of the season. And Seattle, like the Indians, they have at times been a, a streaky ball club. A lot of ups and downs this year for Lloyd McClendon's team. They had one nine of their last 12 before last night's game. Swing and a miss. Oh, no, the ball was tipped and in the dirt. Zanino got just a piece of it to stay alive. That was a nice breaking ball, and he did. He, he just couldn't hold on to it. He tipped it right out of the glove. You could see it hit off the padding and gets out of the glove, so he'll get another swing here. And again, the runners will be moving. Too much to get that ball. <laughs> it must be a Sunday day game, huh? Well, you want me to bend over and pick that up? <laughs> you kidding me? Uh, Cano at second, Seeger at first. They'll be rolling on this 3 2 to Zanino. And now Swanson and the bases are now loaded. Comes Logan Morrison, so it's a left on left matchup for TJ. It just seemed apparent to me, Rick, he was not going to give in to Zanino. Right. He, ma he made a couple of good pitches inside to him that he fouled off, but he's not going to let the right hander beat him, and he's been swinging a pretty hot bat as far as the long ball goes, so he's going to take his chances with the left hander. But the unfortunate thing is, is the inning should be over. Now he's having to work hard to get through this very first inning. Yeah, he's had to face. This will be the third hitter that he's had to face after the double play that wasn't turned. I've just been informed that the official score has charged Nick Swisher with an error. Rightfully so. You know, on a double play ball, and normally you can't assume the double play, but he just flat dropped it. And I can see how that would be an error easily. Outside one on one. I mean, the transfer, it was fine. Avilas gets rid of it, and you see in the stretch, Swisher comes out, and he's not that far. He just took his eye off, and missed the ball. It looks like it's just as simple as how you said. He took his eye off the ball. It is. It's that simple. Slowly chopped up the first base line, but that will stay foul. Well, uh, when you get into a game and you're facing the best pitcher that, that a team has, you cannot give them anything. Because you're going to have to earn everything with him on the mound. So hopefully House can pitch around that, pick his defense up, get him back into the dugout right here. He's up high with it, two and two. Ace is loaded, two down here in the first. And the 2 2. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out to get out of the inning. Well, a terrific job by TJ House to pick his defense up. The Mariners leave him loaded.
Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. By the Cleveland Clinic. Call today for an appointment today. And by the Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. Just off the Puget Sound, Seattle, Washington. The Safeco Field roof is open today. Yeah, it's been open all weekend. Yeah, we caught a break as the original forecast looked like a lot of rain this weekend, but roof's been open for all three games. It's been really pleasant. It's almost like a nice break from the summer when you come here to Seattle. Well, we, we went from one extreme to the other, from the desert in, in <laughs> Phoenix to come out here to the, the clouds and coolness of Seattle. Lonnie Chisnall will lead off the second inning. Chisnall the night off yesterday. He was one for four with a double in the series opener. A lot of parades and things going on around the city today. Chisnall with a fly ball to center field. Saunders will make the catch one away. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Felix Hernandez perhaps on route to another Cy Young Award, the way he's pitching right now. Well, he's pitching uh, about as good as you can pitch. Look at the opposition hitting just 215. He doesn't walk, guys. He doesn't give up many hits. And, you know, he can do just about anything. So you're going to have to earn everything you get off this guy. They're the number one rated defense. I was going to say, hopefully, maybe they'll make an error and you can continue something and get it going, but you're going to have to maximize every opportunity that you have. <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> it's called a strike. The year Felix Hernandez won the Cy Young Award. His record was only 13 and 12. Just got game over the break even mark. The 1 2 pitch. But most felt that his 2.27 earn run average and the fact that he logged 249 and two thirds innings with 232 strikeouts was evidence enough that he was the most dominant pitcher in the league that year and sometimes as a pitcher you can't be penalized for the fact that your team doesn't score well, runs when you pitch that is true all you can do is try and keep your your team in the game this year though wins haven't been a, a real problem for him as he's gone nine and two although as I pointed out he, he had a stretch there where he was pitching well and they just didn't score Murphy starts out two down. Kings Court in attendance here today. They wear the yellow t shirts. Yeah, that's a special ticket you buy. They take up a, a nice sized wedge of the lower deck. You get a shirt, a K card, and a ticket to the game. And they are up every time a hitter yeah. gets the two strikes. <laughs> they do. They get into it. And he's, he's going to be in some select company if he gets to five strikeouts today. He has two. He will tie. Uh, the Indians Hall of Famer Bob Feller for the six most who've recorded 1,836 strikeouts before turning 29. And he won't turn 29 till April, next April. Yeah, he's he's on pace to becoming one of the game's all-time best. No, you're seeing guys shake their heads. If this guy gets a couple inches off the plate, he can stay there, and he's going to be tough to hit. That one breaking ball, the last pitch to Murphy, or the last at bat, looked like it might have been just a little around the plate. Third ball missed down and in two and one. You remember Chief Garcia. Who used to pitch here in Seattle a long time ago wore the number 34 and yeah. had the same mannerisms Hernandez has of, of him. Swing and a miss. Two and two, and that's that change up that Hernandez throws. It's it's got different actions just based on how he grips it. 
There's the fake club. Look at him. Yeah, that circle change that he can throw it. Uh, uh, not that he has different grips, but maybe on the seams of the baseball. Sometimes it runs away. Sometimes it dives straight down. Like think, a splitter. I think as a hitter, that that's you don't want to get to two strikes against this guy if you can help it. Well, you would try not to, but. He has such a feel for for pitching. He's three and two to Swisher. No score here, second inning. A little tapper back to the mound. Indians go one, two, three. No score in Seattle. Stefan Romero, John Buck, and Cole Gillespie for the Mariners. Well, and TJ House ended up having to throw 16 extra pitches in that first inning. After that double play was not turned. But he was able to get out of it. So that was a pick me up. Romero lines one foul on the right side. His first action in the series. In fact, the bottom third of this order has not played in the series to this point. Oh, he tied him up nicely. Romero is getting his 39th start of the year. Nine hits in his last 41 at bats. Earlier this month, he came off the bench. And in the fourth inning, hit a pinch hit three run homer against yeah, the Atlanta that's Braves. The pinch, uh, National League. Yeah, I don't know if that was a. Had to be in Atlanta. It was in Atlanta. Right field on the move. David Murphy. He's there. He's got it. One away. Let's go downstairs and check in with Katie with him for the first time today. Well, Matt, for TJ House in two of his last three starts, he faced off against Jake Peavy. Today, he gets King Felis, and earlier he shared with us what it's like sharing the mound with a pitcher like that in our Here Right Audiology Sounds of the Game. Actually, I think it just makes it a little bit more fun. You know, for me, it's just another challenge and another obstacle I've got to overcome, and being able to go out there and face one of the best in the game, and, you know, I'm going to elevate my level and try to match him. That's a, it's a great way to look at it, man. Elevate your game, pitch against the best. A lot of fun. Two down here in the second inning. Cole Gillespie.
Gillespie has to feel somewhat at home here with the Mariners. Grew up in Oregon. Fouled back. Slow chopper. Chisnall cuts it off, has to get rid of it in a hurry. And he's safe at first. Must be beating it out for an infield hit with two down here in the second inning. The play looked like he was developing in slow motion. He did top it. And in comes Chisnall. By the time he gets the ball to first, he beats it out. It was a bang bang play. But it looks like the foot gets on the base. And then he ends up tripping over the, the foot of uh, Swisher. A couple of bad breaks in the early going here already for TJ House. Top of the order, and here's Willie Bloomquist. Routine bouncer to short. Avilas will go to second for the inning ending force. Through two, no score in Seattle. No score as we go to the third inning. For Cleveland, George Kateris, Mike Avilas, and Michael Bourne do up. Kateris has absolutely made the most of his opportunities this year. Six out of 14. This is one of the things Sandy Alomar told me is uh, is part of the thankless aspect of being a backup catcher. He said most of the times when you get a chance to play. Yeah. It's always <laughs> against the other team's best starting pitcher. Well. <laughs> yes. And you know what though. It doesn't matter. Your job is to go in there. Sure. Handle that pitcher. And, and I know. It's it's no fun. But you're in the big leagues. You'd much rather do that than be in triple A and catching all the time. Now the O2. Harris, did he hold up? He did, says Marvin Hudson. And he'll live to see another pitch here in this at bat. Sort of surprised because the one earlier he called on Kipnis, the second hitter of the game, I thought he, oof, it was about That's the same. Close. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Now a 1 2. Able to lay off downstairs, two balls, two strikes. 
And, and a lot of times that's what happens when you're an extra player whether you're the catcher you know the second catcher because he hasn't had many opportunities. It's the day game after the night game for for Gomes. It, it, when you're an extra player you give your guys chances against the good guys. Good eye by Kateris. He's laid off a couple of tough pitches here and he's worked the count back to full three and two. Mike Avilos waits on deck. And that's the one tough thing is the zone. It's tough to know the strike zone when you're not up there getting at bats. That's the toughest part of it. Last ball got him outside corner. Painted. Third strikeout for Hernandez, one away. Well, can you beat the best? Join millions of players now on the only official home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. You square off against your friends from around the world live in multiplayer derby mode and climb to the top of the leaderboards. Download today for free on the App Store and Google Play. Avila swing and a miss. Slowly chopped to short. Big hop for Bloomquist. Two away. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pawlowski. Thanks out two down top of the order Michael Bourne. Bourne fly to left his first time up. Last night during our telecast, that when asked about it, Lloyd McLennan said Felix Hernandez should start the All Star game, period. Rounded to third base. Seeger has it, throws out Bourne. Indians again go one, two, three. And we'll go to the bottom of the third, no score. If you're enjoying a cold one today, stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Michael Saunders, Robinson Cano, Kyle Seeger for the Mariners here in the bottom half of the third.
yesterday the Mariners had their season ticket holder appreciation day at the ballpark. They had a woman by the name of Gloria Stamos who has been a season ticket holder since 1977. Inception here. The Mariners first year here in Seattle. And I, I went and looked it up because I was just curious. Gloria didn't see a lot of good baseball in the early years in the first six full seasons because you had the strike year of 1981 but in their first six full seasons they averaged 98 losses ouch swing and a miss he strikes him out third strikeout for TJ house and we've got one down here in the third well uh, another Sugardale dollar dog night Friday July 4th Kansas City Royals are in town dollar dogs during the game there'll be fireworks following the ball game you can visit Indians.com for your tickets. That's some loyalty that's a fan. Yeah when you come back from 1977 back in the old kingdom. And then you go back to the extreme. What was it? 2001 when they won 200 or 116, 116 games. games. Yeah. Their first winning season was 1991. So she started as a season ticket holder in 1977. Didn't see a winning season here until 1991. And then, of course, four years later, they were battling the Indians to go to the World Series. Well, throughout the course of the of the time here, she. Had an opportunity to see a lot of great baseball players well, no come doubt. through here. No doubt. I mean, a lot of great players. Canelo, big bouncer to third. And Lonnie Chisnall will swing it over two down. Seattle's a pretty young city when it comes to professional sports, relatively speaking. I mean, the Seattle Supersonics came here in 1967, so that right. was their first taste of the NBA in the late 60s, and then they were the NBA champs in a decade. 1978, they were hoisting the trophy uh, for the NBA. The, the Seattle Pilots actually came here in 1969. That was for one, one season. Year. And then that was just a catastrophe. They ended up going to Milwaukee after one year and became the Brewers, and because it was such a disaster and because of the litigation that followed, the, the Mariners were born here in 1977. But then the, the, the Seattle Seahawks, who were just across the way here, of course, their first year, I believe that was 1976. Well, it is. You're right. It is young when you talk about sports franchises. Yeah, so all of their pro teams have, were born late 60s, early to uh -huh. mid 70s here. But they are very, uh, very ardent, passionate, passionate. They, yeah, they really fan are. Base. They love their teams. They certainly do. They can get quite loud. Kyle Seeger, a base hit off the end of the bat, his first time up. The 0-2 offering is just a little bit outside. Same spot, two and two. Seattle Seahawks and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers came in the same year. Well, while Tampa Bay didn't win a game, Seahawks. Yeah, at they least, were what? Oh, yeah. 16. Yeah, Seahawks had a couple of wins, and it wasn't long before they were a factor. Swisher takes it himself, and for the first time today, the Mariners go one, two, three, and we are still scoreless through three innings.
no score as we go to the fourth inning here in Seattle. That's the ground crew, Jim Murphy and the Rondells out there in between innings. There's Jim on the far left. Yeah. Tilting the, tilting the hat, grabbing the arrow. Hey, remember you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have one of your pictures shown during our telecast. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Jason Kipnis will lead it off. Only one hitter for the Indians has reached through the first three innings, and that was Michael Brantley, who drew a two out walk in the first. Felix Hernandez. He does uh, have a perfect game. In his docket, the first perfect game in Mariners history, August 15th, 2012, one nothing victory over the Tampa Bay Rays. Right here, 12 punch outs. Chop towards second base. Cano will throw him out, one away. Let's go downstairs to Katie. Katie, what are the Indians hitters? Talking about coming into this game uh, facing Hernandez. Well, Matt, they said, you know, when Felix Hernandez is on, he's by far one of the best pitchers in the game. And when he's got a good sinker and curveball working, they almost appear unhittable when you stand in the box. But you'll notice most of his outs come down buried in the dirt. So they said you cannot start chasing low balls. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. The key today, take the guessing game out of it and force him back up in the zone. All right. Thanks, Katie. I, I asked Mike Blowers. Uh, before the ball game, the former Mariner player and television broadcaster now about Hernandez, and he said he's better than he was the year he won the Cy Young Award. So that's kind of scary. Well, uh, you know, and your approach and say make him get the ball up, it, it's it's okay. That's what you'd love to do. But the next thing you do sometimes, you, you can look up at the scoreboard, you're down 0-2. So how do you make him get it up? Because it, he can start expanding. The one guy he has had problems throwing strikes to is Michael Brantley. Liner to short and it's caught. By Bloomquist. He had to show the umpires. Took him a while to make the official signal, but it was clear he caught it. Two down. You know when you when you're going out in your face and that's the thing everything is down in the strike yeah. zone for him and it goes down even when uh, you know he gets ahead of you everything down you won't see anything belled high there's the breaking ball down he has his change up down his good fastball that is low in the strike zone so you know it's tough to tell what pitch he's throwing that's why you know with the curveball or the change up when you hear us say He's got to keep the ball down on the strike zone. If you hear a coach or manager talk about down on the strike zone, what we just showed you was a perfect illustration of what they mean. Because when you're down in the strike zone, the hitters can't can't do anything with it. You have to use your legs, and most more times than not, you're just going to hit it right into the ground. And even Lonnie went down and, and dug one out and hit it pretty good, but it it just got to about medium deep center field. Just it's hard to drive it's it really it's tough to elevate hard. it. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Anything that's down around the knees, it's tough to get it up in the air. Santana drives one to left field, but Gillespie backpedaling makes the catch. Again, the try goes in order, and we remain scoreless in Seattle.
Com, a crew fan struck by lightning in last night's game. Brad Kozlowski's champagne bottle troubles and check out a hot dog inspired by Johnny Manziel. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. Mike Zanino, who drew a walk his first time up, will lead off the home half of the fourth. Now ball to short Mike Avilas. Gobbles it up, throws him out. One away. 12,500 fans will get a Jason Kipnis bobblehead. That'll be courtesy of First Energy. It'll all take place Tuesday, July 8th. The Indians will take on the New York Yankees and Derek Jeter coming into town for his last hurrah through Cleveland. So you can get your tickets. Visit Indians.com. Logan Morrison taking a strike. He struck out swinging to end the first inning. Still Morrison had already given up on it. It drops in for a strike. Yeah, House has done a nice job throwing strikes as he usually does. He's one guy that usually finds a strike zone two to one ratio most of the time. And has mixed it up nicely today. Swing and a miss, chase one on the dirt. Kateris will throw it down to first to complete the out. Fourth K for TJ House, and there are two down on the fourth inning. Yeah. Expanded his zone, got up Morrison to chase that ball in the dirt. There's the breaking ball. Kateris just kept it in front of him. Was going to tag him, but couldn't reach him. His arms weren't long enough, so he'll just go out and flip it to first. Now, Stefan Romero, who flied to right his first time up. That is the third foul. The ball girl down on she it. made a nice yeah. catch when we were talking about something on a line drive uh, an inning earlier where she was able to jump up and catch a snag a line drive. So she's brought her a game gold today. Glove, gold glove caliber ball girl. Murphy on the move makes the catch in front of the track and Seattle for the second straight inning goes in order.
by Sunnyside Toyota. A quarter mile west of the Great Northern Mall on the North Olmstead Auto Mile. I live in furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin. And by Kia. Visit IKEAcleveland.com to learn more. Gorgeous day in Seattle, and the Indians and Mariners are scoreless through four. Lonnie Chisenhall, David Murphy, and Nick Swisher here in the fifth. Chisenhall fly to center. His only time up. Felix Hernandez has retired 10 in a row since the two out walk to Michael Brantley in the first. He's only struck out three to this point. Lonnie Chisholm bangs one up the middle and it's through a base hit. First hit of the game for the Indians and it's a leadoff single here in inning number five. Ground ball that found a hole and got into center field. That's when the Mariners got their hit last night was in the fifth inning. It was a leadoff hitter leading off the bottom half of the fifth and Chisholm does it today. That ball stayed upstairs a little bit for Chis. Gets it under the glove of Cano. So you get your leadoff man aboard. David Murphy is strikeout victim his first time up fouls and right back. Murphy trying to snap an 0 for 14, but it's not just the 0 for 14. He has one hit in his last 40 at bats. Bit low, one and one. into a good count. It might be a good count to start the runner here as well. He gets a lot of ground balls and he will throw change ups and maybe you want to get a hole and, and Murphy's been struggling. A lot of times when hitters are struggling the manager likes to maybe create something there you know. Keep a guy back let him hit the ball put it in play hit it on the ground and start your runner. It would be a good time. Runner holds on the 2 1 pitch and it's called a strike. Now the Kings Court is up with their cards. That's what you want to do. You want to freeze on line drives, and then Seeger just gets rid of it in a hurry. He realized that Chisholm got off the base too far. You have to freeze. Look at he broke the second base a few steps, and as, as I'm sure Sandy told him right there, line drive, stay put, make the ball go through, don't let the second baseman tag you. But he broke the second base, and they turned the double play. That pumped up Hernandez, and now there are two down for Nick Swisher. No score here in the fifth.
Two and one to count. 56 pitches thus far for Hernandez, and 33 of them have been strikes. Yeah, that's nothing the way in the fifth inning. Average of right now about 11 pitches per inning. Well, if he retires Swisher, and like Josh Tomlin last night, he'll be just one over the minimum. Three one pitch and foul back full count. Bright sunshine peeking from behind the clouds. And the payoff pitch. Outside, ball four. He's won the second of the game. Take a look at this pitch on the uh, our Nissan pitch tracker as it's going to go down and away. That's off the dish. You can see Zanino trying to frame it up. Didn't get it, it's away. So they do get another base runner. His second walk this afternoon. It's the sixth time, and this is 18th start that he's walked two in a game. George Kateris called out on strikes his first time up, but not until the count went to three and two. And a breaking ball for a strike over the outside corner. Almost like he got mad because he walked Swisher. So he comes right back and nails the outside corner with two consecutive pitches. And the 0-2 pitch in the dirt blocked nicely by Zanino. Taking his lead in the one two to Kateris. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. His fourth K of the afternoon. And we'll head to the bottom of the fifth here at Safeco Field. Still no score. No score bottom of the fifth inning. For Seattle, John Buck, Cole Gillespie, and Willie Bloomquist. 
T.J. House has retired seven straight. Up high for ball one. Should be playable. Can they get there though? Brantley makes the grab and foul ground for out number one. Our in-game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Felix Hernandez has given up one hit. He's walked two, but he has struck out four and has not allowed a run. But guess what? TJ House is pretty good himself. Yes, indeed. Four strikeouts through four innings. He has now set down eight straight. Well, we mentioned it. Sometimes if you're going to beat the Mariners when Felix Hernandez is pitching, you have to match him zero for zero and hope you can scratch one out or get to the right. bullpen or something. Right. Well, you don't even want to get to their bullpen the way they've been pitching. You just try and scratch one out. Ground ball right at the second baseman tip this. Two away. I think what's worth repeating though that Felix Hernandez had a stretch of three straight starts earlier this First month. Against Tampa Bay, he went seven innings. He left, there was no score in the game. Next time out against Texas, eight and a third inning. When he left, there was no score. And the next time out against San Diego, he pitched seven innings, and when he left, the game was one to one. Yeah. So they don't they don't score a whole lot. When if you're an offense and you've got a guy like him on the mound, if you can get him a lead early, you would think, you know, he would be in cruise control. Single to right of the first inning. Bounced into a fielder's choice that ended the second. Hard on a bouncer to short. Avilas with the backhand and a good throw to get him. Three in a row. Again, the Mariners retired in order, and that's 10 straight set down by DJ House. of the game remember tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have them shown during one of our telecasts. The roof has been open all weekend long. Finally the hitters uh, 
especially the hitters uh, for Seattle. They, they like it when the roof is closed. Some guys feel you, you can see the ball a little bit better. I don't know if the ball carries one way or the other better, but. Well, maybe it's a little darker in here with the lights on. You can see it a little better. I don't know. It, it's bright out here today with the sun out. And for fans who may not be aware, that even when the roof is closed here at Safeco, it's still open air. It's essentially just a giant covering. Right. But it doesn't enclose the ballpark. Remember though, Rick, coming here with the roof open or closed, where we said, "Boy, the wind's a factor." We just no. don't get a lot of. Sure. Well, I remember there was we hit eight home runs in a ball game here one yeah. time. Remember that? That was a night game too. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like back in those days they always came up here and they they swung the bats well. Yeah. And they scored runs in this place where we said, "Wait a minute, this isn't supposed to be a home run park," but they did a lot of damage up here in the past. It's changed in the last couple of years. As far as the Mariners taking advantage of the Indians in this ballpark. One two pitch to Avilas. All right back. Well and the Mariners themselves they've hit 40 home runs here and only 27 on the road. Uh, sometimes things are hard to figure out and that's one of them. To offer it. He always hits it to right, but that's going to slice out of play. Ball, the curve ball. And it's done to perfection down in the zone. Top of the order, Michael Bourne. So that strike out there uh, ties him with uh, Bob Feller. Birthday with the number of strikeouts he has on his docket. Strike call. Tell you one thing though, those people that go out there and the that are in the king and his court out there, they get a lot of exercise with two strikes, don't they? They always get up. And there's the the names before the eight. Sudden Sam McDowell leads the way. Fly loving on there. And they're back up on their feet again as the count goes to one and two. Look at that, Don Drysdale. Some great names on that list. Before it's all said and done, he will be up there. The one-two, up and away with it. And now full count. Indians hitters, I'll give them credit. They have tried to work the count and be as patient as possible, right? And not chase. They've had a number of full counts today. They've got them up to this is pitch number 75 now. And he comes back to strikeout born for number six. Two down. Injury report today brought to you by. The attorneys at El Canel. Seattle feels like they're. Close to getting 
smoke and heart back. And that would be uh, very important for a lineup that has. As I mentioned Ooh. earlier, it's been struggling offensively. Two strike count. And it's up and away. Houston leading Detroit 6 4. They're in the ninth inning. Down in Texas. Angels and Royals tied 4 4 in the ninth in Kansas City. Get this a bouncer to second base. And the Indians are out one, two, three here in the sixth. Still scoreless in Seattle. For Seattle here in the home half of the six, two, three, and four hitters do up. All left handed. Michael Saunders is 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. Tried to drag bone his way aboard, but he fouled it off. Can't blame a guy for trying, and especially the way TJ House has been pitching. He has retired 10 Seattle hitters in a row. Yeah, Saunders tried a, a bunt last night with Tomlin on the mound, and Josh was able to retire him. And that was a pitch on the inside part of the plate that would have been a good one to pull. Terry Francona might be asking was Saunders out of the box when that foul ball hit him. I'm not sure what else he would be inquiring about here. Yeah, I don't think he left the box. I could be wrong. That ball was inside and it hits him. Well, that front foot was in the box. I can see why Terry would want to ask that was. Questionable maybe swing and a miss 0 and 2. Slowly chopped. House got the bounce. Quickly oh. throws it low though. Oh boy. Yeah, Saunders all the way to second, and he's still going. He's headed for third. Throws offline. Yeah, how 
just rushed the play. You know, he tried to get that ball, and then he gave no chance for Swisher to try and catch it. He handcuffed him as he turned. Watch, he's going to have to turn around and get it. Instead of just trying to make a decent throw, he still had him. He spikes it. And I mean, he slings one past Swisher at first. And now Saunders been able to get all the way around the third base. So that'll go. I'm not sure if it'll be a hit and an error. They give him a hit, but I mean. Well, yeah, they're going to give him the hit and the break, but it should have been an out. You see, by two steps. Yeah, he's out. He's he had a, a lot of time. But I mean, th they're going to give him a hit because he's at home, but it's a bad play there by House where he tried to rush it. So the second error tonight. And now Seattle. Great position to be in here. You know, in a game like this, one mistake could be very costly. And now we'll see if TJ can pitch himself out of it. But look out because you've got Robinson Cano coming up. He is 0 for 9 in the series. In tight for ball one. Two to nothing lead. He had been a non factor in this series. But when House went up and in and spun him out of the way, that got the blood pumping. Only the fifth home run of the year by Cadell. But when you fall behind in the count, he comes inside and he drilled it. He was waiting for something. He didn't miss it. So Seattle takes the lead now with the two run home run. You know, snapping an 0 for 14 with that home run. But again, game like this, when you're pitching against a guy like Felix Hernandez, that the error by TJ House. Open the inning up for the Mariners. Well, sure. You, you, now you're trying to be a little too fine, and you got to. Even if he ended up at second base, you had your chance to make him move him over and try and get him in. But all the way to third, then you try and be perfect. And that after T.J. had retired ten in a row. And Saunders really, I mean, he was he was trying to bunt his way he, aboard he early it. in the at bat. Two and two. Up Mike Zanino who has walked and grounded out. He 
A.J. House taking something off in the count one on one. John Axford up in the Indian bullpen. The two errors committed today by the Indians give them now 70 on the year. Seattle leads the league. They've committed the fewest mistakes at just 39. So you got the Mariners have given committed 39 and the Indians have committed 70. Uh huh. Zanino strikes out two away. That's five strikeouts for TJ House. Well, another dollar dog night. Thursday, July 10th, as the Yankees will come to town. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. Logan Morris into the plate. He has struck out twice today. Toward center field, Michael Bourne can't get to it. He hit it off the end of the bat. And yeah. Falls in for a two out single to keep the inning alive for Stefan Romero. Of, not a lot of carry to that. But it was elevated. It would made it a little bit easier for him to get up there and get it off the end of the bat because it was upstairs. So the third hit in the inning. Chop foul. Tell you what, this guy comes to the plate swinging. I know Romero doesn't yeah. get a lot of opportunities. There's not many pitches. He's taken today. He's, he swings at everything. One and one to count. Pretty good pitch after he went up and in on Romero the pitch before to throw that change up down and away. Up the middle Mike Avila scoops it up flips it to Kipnis and the inning is over. Six complete and now Robinson Cano has put the Mariners on top two to nothing.
Going to the seventh inning with the uh, Mariners in front two to nothing. Take a look at Safeco Field from our Panini's overstuffed camp. Seattle making some changes now defensively. They're going for defense. James Jones comes into the ball game. He takes over in center field and Michael Saunders goes from center over to right. Yeah, they were able to get two on the board. Get Hernandez uh, a couple of runs and now it's time for them to play defense. Indians down to nine outs here. First time through the order, the Indians had no hits, one base runner on a walk. Second time through the order, one hit, one walk. Now third time through, they're 0 for 2 thus far as Michael Brantley takes a strike. Brantley walked in the first, lined out in the fourth. Ball to short. Bloomquist has it. One away. Time for another Mazda game break. Here's Al. Thanks, Al. Minnesota leading Texas 3 2. They're in the ninth down in Arlington. Astros beat the Tigers in Houston 6 4. And the Royals prevailed 5 4 over the Angels in Kansas City. Sox also won earlier today. Jose Quintana bested Mark Burley. And Burley was going for his 11th win of the year. Only fitting they beat their former teammate, yeah. huh? High pop, out of play. Now, Jose Quintana went seven shutout innings in that ball game as the White Sox combined for a four hit shutout over Toronto. Four nothing Chicago, the final score. Lonnie Chisinau waits on deck. The 3 1 to Santana is ball four. And so the tying run will come to the plate here in the seventh inning. Tonight inside the golf zone. Highlights. From Congressional. As Jimmy Hanlon will tell you, Justin Rose was able to hold on for the victory in that tournament. We also will have great tips to help your game. It's all tonight at 8 o'clock here on Sports Time Ohio. Just the third time this year that Hernandez has walked three guys in a ball game. Chisinau down the left field line, but it's slicing out a play foul. He's been having the kind of year that you almost expect that ball to land fair. Yeah, I saw him breaking out of the box, so I think he realized it was slicing foul. Lonnie with the only hit off for Hernandez today. High chopper Cano able to basket catch it. Out number two as Santana gets in the scoring position. Cadeau knew he had to get there. That ball was so high in the air that if he lets it bounce, probably going to be a hit.
So David Murphy the batter is 0 for 2. He has struck out. And then he lined into a double play back in the fifth. Sounds silly to say this in a game in which the Indians have one hit, but I think the hitters have done a pretty good job of of waiting and, and not swinging a lot of bad pitches. He just haven't hasn't given them much to really do anything with. You can count on one hand how many pitches have been up in the zone. Everything has been down and going down. He's, he hasn't thrown anything down the middle of the plate. And it's not like they've made a lot of. First pitch outs or early at bat outs. They've tried to work the count best they can. Well, this guy again will be, and, and it's a Mariners record, ninth straight game where he's gone seven innings in less than two earned runs, unless they do something here in a hurry. Randy Johnson had it at seven. Well, he's at eight looking for nine. Now the one two. Murphy is rung up. Seven shutout innings for Felix Hernandez. And the King and his court leading it by a score of two to nothing. Time now for the seventh inning stretch. It's brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. Indians down two to nothing. John Buck, Paul Gillespie, Willie Bloomquist, go back for the Mariners. 
John Axford is still up in the Indians bullpen. TJ House just. Just under 90 pitches here this afternoon. So be number 87. Smash eats up the Velas. Buck is aboard with a leadoff single. Yeah, that, uh, that's a do or die play if you're a Velas. I mean, a line drive right at him, and you either catch it and it goes in, it deflected off his glove, but not much you could do there, boy. Ball hit right on the nose, and Francona going to make the trip to the mound and make the move and go to the bullpen. So a timeout here in Seattle with the Mariners leading it two to nothing. The call to the bullpen brought to you by Cleveland Clinic will be for John Axford. Jersey. On Saturday, July 5th, the Indians will host the Kansas City Royals in that series. And July 5th marks the 67th anniversary of the Hall of Famer breaking the color barrier in the American League. And fans enjoy the fireworks after the ball game. Indians.com for your tickets. John Axford on for the Indians. It's his 36th appearance of the year. Pinch runner at first base, I believe it's Dustin Ackley. It is indeed. Cole Gillespie is one for two. Thinking along the same lines I am with the two nothing lead here. And you don't want to bunt probably in this situation, but you certainly could start a runner. Try and create a hole and do something to add on. He squares. Oh, okay. He bunts. Nice job. Oxford will flip it to first, one away. Out of the top of the order, Willie Bloomquist.
Lindquist has been a solid utility man for a long time. He broke in to the big leagues with the Mariners back in 02. This is his 12th year in the big leagues. He's also spent time in Kansas City, Cincinnati, and Arizona. Stairs with it. Last year, Bloomquist played second base shortstop in left field. This year, he's played shortstop, third base, second base, left field, first base, he even started a game at DH. So we're going to miss and strikes him out, two down. Comes Michael Saunders. Yeah, he elevates the fastball, letter high, gets him to swing through it. So out number two. Nothing and two on Saunders. And now Axford's 0 2. Strikes him out. Axford gets a couple of strikeouts to end the seventh inning. It remains Seattle 2, Cleveland nothing. Presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Stay tuned for Indians Live brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care coming up after the game. Here in the eighth inning, it'll be Nick Swisher, George Kateris, and Mike Avilas due up for Cleveland. Swisher walked in the fifth inning. 
One of only four Indians to reach base today. Swisher with a walk. Chisholm Hall with the Indians only hit. Santana and Brantley have also walked. And that has been it. Missed outside. Seattle bullpen getting some action right now as Fernandez uh, Hernandez uh, closes in on 100 pitches this afternoon. I would think that these guys most of the time figure, okay, this is when we get a day off, is when this guy is on the mound. Yeah, he. He has been just dealing. It's, it's everything we thought of. He's three and zero oh against the Indians in this ballpark coming into this this game, trying to go four and zero. Oh. He just makes it look easy. Only giving up the one hit. That one hit that Chisholm Hall got was a seeing eye base hit. At, you know, on the ground up the middle. The only short outing he's had this year was on. May the second, a game in Houston. He only pitched five innings, and I don't know if there were other, any other circumstances. He only gave up two earned runs in that game, five hits, 89 pitches. But one of those days where he just might not have had it. Yeah. He, but he's a guy when you go out there, he's he's a legitimate ace of a staff. This is what you talk about. Yeah. When you're talking about an ace, nobody gets any better than this. Here's Chisholm Hall's base hit. He got a ball up a little bit and it just gets through. You can see Cano went for a slide and got underneath his glove and gets into center field. Other than that, it's been all Felix Hernandez. Seven punch outs. And his group out there in left field has been up on their feet all day long with two strikes, looking for more punch outs. They go home. They, I know they sleep well at night after a game. He pitches up and down. Up yeah, and down. right. Here's a three-two to Swisher. <laughs> Struck him out looking. And that's number eight for Hernandez. Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. How much more you can say about him? No, I mean half of his strikeouts, uh, four of the eight have come. They're looking, so he makes perfect pitches. And then when he's not making a perfect pitch, he may get one out of the strike zone, and you get him to chase. So eight strikeouts. Bouncer foul, first base side. He has hit double digits and strikeouts four times this year. Two starts ago against San Diego, he had 10. Against Tampa, he had 15. And then earlier in the year. But he went one game this year without a strikeout. And that's hard to believe because he pitched six in the third inning. He gave up 11 hits in that game against their rival in the division, the Oakland A's. Side with it.
Kind of like Josh Tomlin last night. Hernandez seems to be getting stronger as yeah, the game goes he on. He sure does. There's just a straight fastball. And that's what Tomlin did last night because when your off speed pitches are so devastating that you get guys to chase, the last thing they look for when they get to two strikes is a fastball right there. And that's exactly what he threw at Terrace. So, George, you know, you get a, you finally get a start. We're sorry it had to be against King Felix, man. Yeah, he's taken the. Golden Sombrero here today with three strikeouts. Mike Avila's 0 for 2. Playable here. Morrison makes the catch. Terrific play by the Mariners first baseman. The Indians go one, two, three. It's still two to nothing, Seattle. Bottom of the eighth inning, Seattle's Felix Hernandez in another dominating performance here today. Getting, hey, high fives and hugs and back slaps, so it looks like we'll be done after eight. Which might give the Indians a little hope, as good as the Mariners' bullpen has been this year, at least they won't have to see Hernandez in the ninth inning. Meanwhile, Mark Zipchinski will pitch the bottom of the eighth here for the Tribe. He's got the three, four, and five hitters coming up. 41st time for Zepchinski this year. That'll tie him for the league lead with Gregerson of Oakland, who's been out 41 times. Axford came out, had a, uh, a nice inning where he struck out two. For a strike. Well, there's the difference in the ball game. That swing. That's on our Wendy slow motion replay. That was the two runs that we were able to put on the board, and really, that's the only damage that he has done to the Indians in this series. They pitched him very well. He came into the series. He was right behind Brantley in game number one, where he was hitting 324. Now he's at 317. I 
the chopper off the plate. Kip is going to have to hurry. Can't get him. Yeah, that was just too high. That was. Uh, it's almost like you had to barehand it, and it was up there forever. Right off the plate. There's nothing you could do. You have to wait for it to come down. And look at that ball. I mean, that is about as high as you can get. You know, with just very average speed, but enough speed to beat it out. There's Kipnis did everything in his power to get him, but just too high. Here's Kyle Seeger. Seeger one for three on the afternoon. Does get to third base. See what happened to him over here. Murphy gets it in. I think he was thinking second base. And then all of a sudden, you can see Avilas makes a throw over. Yeah. He's a dead what? duck at first. I didn't What's watch him. Doing? I don't know. But you see, I don't think Avilas knew either. He was thinking of going to second base, but Murphy gets it in. They get him back at first base. But now they have to bring the infield in because Cano is over at third. Mike Zanino, the batter, 0 for 2 on the day. Fastball away by Zepchinski. If they try and throw that breaker ball down and in, back foot slider, get him to swing and miss. There they are. Bounced it in there, Kateris with a nice block. He was in. It was scorched. He reached for it, and I mean, just another couple of inches, and I think he probably makes the catch there. But Zanino picks up his 28th RBI of the year, and it's now three nothing. Yeah, CL. he didn't get that ball inside enough. They wanted it in, and he, he got too much of the plate. So the first three guys that Zapchinski has faced have all gotten base hits. Necessarily seem like it, but you look up, but all of a sudden the Mariners have 10 hits in the game. And their record when they have 10 hits is pretty good. Did they 
change a scoring decision because I only have nine hits. I've got missing. ten. You got ten? All right. Probably missing one somewhere. Zepchinski delivers, and it's a ground ball right at Kipnis. There's one on the first and inning ending double play. We'll go to the ninth in Seattle. The Mariners lead it three to nothing. Well, we go to the ninth here in Seattle. Mariners with a three to nothing lead. And for the tribe, it'll be the top of the order. Fernando Rodney will come on and try to close it out for Seattle. Stick around for Indians Live. It's coming up next. In game box score brought to you by your Hyundai dealers. Seattle with. Ten hits in the ball game. As I said, it doesn't seem like they have ten hits today, but they do. The only one that matters, the two-run homer by Robinson Cano. That that changed the game. They would add a run in the eighth. Well, that brings down Fernando Rodney, looking for his 23rd save. He had the save on Friday night's ball game, but the Indians were able to get to him. In that game, they got a couple of hits. They did get a run, so I agree with you. You get Hernandez out of there, and you get Rodney in. Maybe your chances are better. Yeah, it would have been nice had they not allowed that that third run. Right, but you got three outs left to play with. Well, and they'll keep that section in yellow down with two strikes. Because the big man is out yeah. of the game. Eight innings, just one hit, eight, nine strikeouts, and three walks for Hernandez. Well, unless something dramatic happens here, this will be the 38th time this year that the Indians have been held to three runs or less. And it will be the 40. First time for Seattle. Oh. And the third caught by Seeger. Boy, that's the one you wanted. You wanted that first guy on to make something happen, and Seeger takes a hit away from Michael Bourne. Boy, that's a big play. Get the leadoff, man. You never know what can happen. He hit it right on the nose, but he stabs it on the backhanded side. What a play. Houston Astros lead the way this year in the American League. 43 times they've scored three runs or less. Then Tampa Bay at 42 times. Believe it or not, Texas, who lost today 3 to, three to 2, they've done it 42 times. <laughs> and then you've got Seattle, Kansas City, and Cleveland. No, 
have to be happy about it but there's certainly no shame in being shut down by Felix Hernandez the way he pitched today is the way he has pitched all season long. He's about to go to 10 and 2 and lower his ERA which came in at 224. Two Keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. They couldn't get to Felix. And while TJ House pitched well, you almost have to pitch perfect yeah. in order to That's beat Hernandez. True. That is absolutely right. Here is Michael Brantley, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. And he takes a strike. Updated ERA now for Felix Hernandez is 2.10. That would tie him for the league lead with Tanaka of the Yankees. It would also put him one win behind Tanaka. Let's see. It's going to be interesting to. As the season goes along, see how that plays out with Tanaka and Hernandez. And even David Price, he's starting to put up some pretty good numbers for Tampa. Bounce to first. Morrison flips it. And the Indians are shut out for the third time this year. And the final score is three to nothing as the Mariners win the series. And the Indians fall to 39 and 42. And 16 and 27 on the road. Seattle goes to 44 and 38. Felix Hernandez gets his 10th win against just two losses, and his ERA drops to 2.10. Fernando Rodney notches the save today for Seattle, and that's his 23rd. And the losing pitcher is TJ House, who falls to 0 2 for the Indians. Key play of the game is brought to you by Key Bank. Well, they, they did a great job with Cano in the series. Up until the sixth inning here, you get one up and in. I don't know if Cano felt like they might have threw at him or what, but they woke him up a little bit because they come in with a fastball and he's able to turn on it and hit it out of the ballpark. And that was really the difference in the ball game right there. Made it two to nothing. He added one on in the eighth. That's our Key Bank Key Play of the Game brought to you by Key Bank. Mariners shut out the Indians three to nothing. We've got some final thoughts coming up next. <laughs> 